But how about Nolan Gorman? And he's back home, man. He's back home. Mm, yeah. Grew up there. Got a bunch of family and friends there. His high school that he first gained notoriety, Sandra Day O'Connor High School in uh, the suburbs of Phoenix. He put on a show for for the home people today with those two solo home runs, both of them absolute rockets, especially the second one. He's now got 23 homers. And let me make sure I'm right about that. One second. He's now got... Um, where are you at, man? 23 home runs. And I think 65... RBIs, 23 home runs, 65 RBIs, and he's slugging 502. Hmm. And he is, he turned 23 on May the 10th. That's some easy power. Ooh, that's amazing. He continues to develop, adjust, all those things. This guy is, a, he's a gem. You know, and some gems aren't gems when you first see him. You know, they need to be polished up right right they need to be refined they probably maybe they need some work till they look like a gem but he's a gem there's no doubt about it and um, if you you compare what he's done early in his career to other players 23 and younger he stands right with the very best and that's not hyperbole Uh, that's a fact and even you know this season with all players and I, I had this stat recently but it has to be updated, but you know, at the, at the time he had 19 homers and 60 RBIs, you know, he was one of only 11 players in the majors at that time who could claim that 11 homers and at least 60, excuse me, at least 19 homers and 60 RBIs. One of 11 guys in the entire major leagues who had that combination, except that the other 10 guys, their average age was, about 27 and a half years old, almost 28 years old. And Gorman, of course, is 23. So if that if that doesn't put it into perspective and context, I don't know what to tell you. He just gets better and better, and he's gone through his little – well, it was more than a little, but he went through a struggle this year, and he's come out on the other side. You're right, that second home run, I finally did get to see the replay. He crushed it way over the swimming pool out there. I mean, it, and it's know. easy power. I mean, you, a lot of guys when they're swinging that hard, you know, they're you can they'll go down to one knee. Or, he just it's it's smooth, easy power every time with him. That's what's amazing on how much better he will be and how many more of those majestic shots we're going to see over the course of his career. Because um, he's 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 going to get barring an injury, he's going to get over thirty this year. And it's a looks left like hand, it. That's it a left-handed like bat that is twenty-three years old. And he's going to have over 30 home runs in a season. And that that is that upside is just something to watch because I think he will continue to get better and he'll start to understand pitchers better. I think he's a, he is a student of his craft in terms of being a hitter, and I think he'll get better and better. I don't know if he'll ever get that one thing I wish he could get, and, that, and I've said this to you before, the ability to fight off a, a, a third strike to get another bat or get another swing. I don't know if he's – because he just he's a power hitter. I don't know if he'll ever develop that, but if he gets that part of his game added to what he already has, it could be even better than what he where he is right now. It's and his defense has been good too, Bernie. You know, yeah, yes, it definitely has. You know, and you, we talk about his, his strikeouts, and I, I I'm not sitting here, uh, you know, acting like he doesn't strike out. Of course he does, but what uh, the, the people that o- that obsess over that are missing the, the larger picture on two fronts. If you uh, if you you have one of the best power hitters in baseball who can just just wreck teams with his home runs, um, and also just uh, just beats he just gives beatdowns to right-handed pitchers. Um, you the trade-off is you'll trade uh, a higher strikeout count that you would prefer. You'll trade it mm-hmm. for ma- massive power. There's no, there's not one baseball person who wouldn't make that trade off. And then the other thing is, people that uh, in, in in the Cardinal fan base, some of them that I hear from, you would think he's the only guy who strikes out a lot, you know. Yeah, you're right. Um, 
uh, I'm looking at this. Okay, right. Uh, Gorman has struck out about 31 percent of the time. Well, no, 30. Well, not even, not quite 30. Okay, and. Let me just read you some names. Ryan Noda, I don't even know who he is. He's for Oakland. He strikes out 34% of the times. James Outman, the rookie with the Dodgers, Mm -hmm. he strikes out 33% of the time. By the way, the Noda guy has a 418 slugging percentage. Outman has a 427 slugging percentage. Uh, Jack Sawinski, who's a good-looking player for Pittsburgh, he strikes out 33% of the time. He he's got a he's got a good slugging percentage. He's fine. He also walks more than Gorman. Uh, Kellenick, the guy that just got hurt in Seattle, thirty three percent strikeout rate. Not close to uh, Gorman in slugging. Byron Buxton, who should not be anywhere near anybody on this list, he strike it strikes out thirty two percent of the time. He's hit one ninety five and he's got a four eighteen slug. Teoscar Hernandez in, in uh, Seattle, 32% strikeout rate. His, his slugging percentage is about, uh, oh, I don't know, about 92 points less than uh, Gorman. Ryan McMahon of the Rockies, 30, 31% strikeout rate. Uh, he's got some power, but the, the slugging percentage is not all that. It is actually less than Gorman. Less by 52 points. And Ryan McMahon plays in a place that air, that uh, d- dramatically uh, inflates your stats. Uh, we all like J.D. Martinez. His slugging, excuse me, J.D. Martinez of the Dodgers, who is a bona fide good hitter and slugger, his strikeout rate is the exact same as Nolan Gorman. Uh Louis Robert with the White Sox, his strikeout rates right there about the same with Gorman. Kyle Schwarber right there with <laughs> Gorman, except that uh, except that Gorman doesn't bat 183 like Schwarber. That's true. You know what Mike Trout's um, before he got hurt, but it's still 358 plate appearance. You know what his uh, strikeout rate was this year? 29 percent. Gorman's is 30. Really? Yeah. Uh, see. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could go on and yeah, on and on. I th- I think I've made my point here, yep, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, he's right there. You'll take the power with whatever he's accomplishing. Uh, you, you know, you know, you know, a guy like Max Muncie, big time, big time strikeout rate. I mean, there's just a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's just a bunch of them. Leave it at that. You know. Uh, like Matt Olson, who now listen, this is l- listen. Gorman's got a strikeout rate that's like about four percent higher than Olson, but still, I think Matt Olson, the Braves' third baseman, is a great, great hitter. Man, love to have him. If you you have any team, his strikeout rate's uh, approaching twenty seven percent. You know, it's not like he's a big contact guy. That's all I'm trying to say. I get it. Yep. This is baseball. So anybody who obsesses over Gorman's strikeout, they're missing the. They're missing a good season, and they're missing perspective on what baseball is and how many guys have higher or about the same strikeout percentage without delivering the power that Gorman delivers. It's a, he's fun to watch. Uh, he did get a hit off a lefty reliever here in this last inning, so put a single to the stats for today. And a texter texted in and said, hey, uh, Steele starts tomorrow for the Cubs. Marmol wouldn't sit Gorman yet again versus a lefty, would he? Question mark. Well, we'll see. I don't get bent out of shape about that as many as some people do. I just don't. But it's again, I, yeah, I'd like to see him start that game. He's hot sure. right now. I let him play. Yeah. So his batting average is, you know, he keeps creeping up a little bit. It's two forty five, and again, I ain't saying that's a great batting average. But what is the? Um, in fact, rather than me, you sit here and guess. I'm gonna look it up and only take a second. The overall major league batting average this season is um hold on. It's two forty eight, so he's at two forty five. Okay. I'm sorry. Is that a problem? Not if he puts in the production he's putting in. <laughs> Slugging percentage in the major leagues, the entire major leagues is four eleven. He's at five oh two and climbing. There you go. So I think I think Cardinals fans appreciate him. I think so. I, 
I shouldn't dwell on the negative uh, Nellies and Nancys. That's that's my fault. But oh, but they're uh, there. Well, they're there. And then the other thing I'll say about this is, um, Jim, you, you and I have joked about this before. When I look at media, when I look at people in other places, right? Mm-hmm. Isn't it interesting how the people, especially this time of the year, when they're when they're talking about trades and they, oh, they ought to trade this guy to that guy to that team? It's always about trading some. It's almost always about trading a player that uh, that plays for a Midwest team and make making sure to trade him to either uh, California or somewhere in New York or Philly or Boston. You know, you know that? Isn't that funny? It's never like, well, yeah, they need to the, – the, the, the Dodgers need to change – oh, they love this young hit slugger. They need to trade him, that, you know, to uh, the White Sox, or the Cardinals. N- never work – you ever notice it never works that way? <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> so that's, that's why you see these things even now. It's like, well, you know, the Cardinals ought to trade Arenado to the Dodgers. Oh, really? Why? <laughs> The Dodgers need their baseman. That's why. Because you're based in L.A. and you are a shill and a homer who has no objectivity, and you think Arenado's t- what too big? He's too big for Little St. Louis. Is that what we're talking about here? <laughs> I get so tired of this stuff, right? And there's so many national people and I, people I respect. Not so much now, but in the run up to the trading deadline. It's like, well, the Cardinals, you know, the Cardinals might have to move Nolan Gorman. They got to give that a hard. They got to really think about that. No, they don't actually. Why? Because you want to see him traded to the Yankees or the or the Dodgers or what, the Padres? Like, is it, is that you want to see him go to Philly? Is is that the reason? Oh, that Nolan Gorman man is twenty three years old. All this power, as great as he is, he's too. He's too good and too big of a player for that market, for that little that little market. There's so much snobbery, it's unbelievable. Even the media ad- adopts this attitude that if someone's based on the Midwest and based in the Midwest, it's like, well, you know, Paul Goldschmidt would look good for the Phillies right now. They, they man, Cardinals ought to trade him. It's always Midwest to one of the coasts. <laughs> always. You're right. And it just drives me. It dri- it's so laughable, you know. <laughs> but I, I got to say, I haven't seen any idiotic uh, Gorman stuff lately, except that one blogger in Seattle that I laughed at. I didn't name him because I don't want to be cruel. Um, the Cardinals need pitching, and here's what you do. They got a surplus. Uh you trade Jordan Walker to Seattle, uh, and Seattle's going to want more than him for, uh, you know, uh, Logan Gilbert at some other dude or whatever. So so the Cardinals should include Nolan Gorman. Oh. Okay. I got you, sport. Whatever you say, I'll pass that along to the Cardinals front office. I'm sure they'll they'll get on that and make that trade in no time. We're That's gonna another need, one. We're going to need Colton Wong back because we're going to need a second baseman now. So throw him in there, too. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. I tell you what, we'll take a uh, another timeout. Uh, Cardinals 11 to 6, um, bottom of the ninth. Uh, nobody out, runner on second. Okay. Andrew Suarez, your time will be short, sir. That's right. Your time will be short. Probably going to be short anyway because, you know, you got to get fresh arms in here for the four-game series against the Cubs that starts tomorrow. 